I think we should talk about what I've learned from the t- about the town website and then in my little exchange with Juliet Jacobson. Is that okay? Yeah. 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 Okay. So on the town website, Amy uh, Schrader very nicely, you know, she had connected me just by, this is all by email with the guy who maintains the town website, the guy who works for the service. And he had said, this is all fine. So then I sent him the link to that uh, test map that Juliet had developed for us with a couple of things, remember, including the fabulous trees (laughs) layer or whatever it was called. And he said, no problem. Um, And aim, and then I, thought we're not going to get to this for months, but Amy nicely a week or so ago wrote to us both and said, is this on track, you know, or is this going to be okay, which was very good of her. And he wrote back and said, yes, I've activated. Of course. (laughs) And I said, wait a minute, you can't (laughs) activate the link that has gibberish on it. (laughs) So he, he. The the sad thing may be, Donna, that no one will notice. Yes. Who's going to look at it? Well, that is to my question, whether I have done the wrong, right thing or the wrong thing. So I said, but he said, I have made it very hard to find on the Historical (laughs) Commission website. And I don't really know what that means. And without looking, because this was, I may have even been in transit. I said, um, will you please deactivate it for now? And he said, sure. So we've left it at sure it is deactivated, but yes. <laughs> no, I, I actually had a, a kind of image of one of our fellow historical commission members finding the gibberish. You know? Judy. <laughs> yes, right, 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 right. Because she, she's the one, because it is Judy who posts things on our website now. I, I don't know how to post on a website. Mm-hmm. Um, but it led me to a question and I wonder if either of you can answer it. As we're developing this and it's in test mode, where would it be? <laughs> Is that one of the things we need to get either Juliet or I, I will, I will, I will actually. I think, I think it, can, it can be on the commission website, just not publicly available. Okay. Yeah, so, so, right, Alan? Yeah, it's a blind link, I think. Um, which it's a what? A blind link, basically. Oh, a blind it's link. A, um, it's not made public. Okay. I know. Okay. I know so that's so that's what we should do. That's what, that's what we should be. The only way to. someone could get to it is if they accidentally enter all thirty-six characters or random characters by accident and land there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to. I, I think one of us should at some point not too far in the future actually have a conversation with Mr. Town website because you know there's a limit to what you can do going back and forth by email I I would rather it were one of you who knows more um it's not me what do you think it could be me I think yeah um yeah okay um and in fact even if that that would be great. So let me let me um, extract his his contact information other than the email which I have, and at some point I think that would be good. So to Juliet, I sent a little bit of this in my email. We had decided the last time we met that I would write and ask her to block out. I think it was your suggestion, Allison, give us a working schedule so we could stop diddling around in 1902, yeah. which is what well, I'm And then saying. make sure that she was available to do what we wanted to do. when. We right, right, right. Away. So when she, when she answered me, again, this was all by email. She said, I can do that, but it will cost, you know, it'll be, I don't remember whether she said 30 minutes or an hour. And then she said, at $100 an hour. And she said, um, and you, I've already spent four hours and you've spent, paid me two two hours with us on the phone and two hours off. And as I wrote, I thought I'm completely 
fine with paying people for work off site, but I think when we were asking her to do things, she should have told us <laughs> that that was billable time. Okay. I don't think this is a reason not to work with her, but I did write back and said, oh, well, thank you. But just four weeks ago, you quoted $90 an hour. And I think she was sort of chagrined. I mean, I didn't say it with an edge. I just said, yeah, yeah. We, should, yeah. we should clarify this. Um, I mean, I billed by the hour for 17 years. So I get, you have to set a fee, <laughs> right? She said, oh, you're right, you're right. So why don't you develop your draft schedule and just send it to me and I'll, I won't charge you for the time it takes to look at it. So okay. Okay. this is, you know, this is all okay, I think. Um, the 250th committee is meeting and has our request on their agenda. Mm -hmm. I, I think we should just stick with the $900. And if we spend it and need more money, ask for more money. Yeah. 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 Sure. Are you going to that meeting at all, Allison? Um. I'm trying to remember if that's a seven o'clock meeting. I think they meet at seven and it's Monday night. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably go. That would be, I think it would be good. I mean, I'm assuming Susan will speak, both Susan and Keith, actually Susan, Keith and Fred, Susan Barron, Keith Bardwell and Fred Barron all separately wrote back to me and said, this sounds great. We just can't decide on their own, but, um, <laughs> and. I'm sure it'll, I'm very sure it'll be fine. <clears throat> yes. So, so that would be good. And then this morning, and I should have done this earlier, I wrote to our librarian to say, hi, Cindy, you had, you had projected that news, we would have access to newspapers.com mid-September and asked me to remind you. I just wrote to her about an hour ago, to be fair. You know what, Allison, you bought the one, whatever the one, the genealogy one, I should turn the recording off if she doesn't do it. I will buy newspapers.com so that we, and which one do you have, Alan? I have them both. Um, oh, you have them both. Well, you could just, can't hey, you just- Hey, you didn't have them both password? last time we talked. Yeah, I've, I've been having a devil of a time with genealogy bank. It just is incredibly slow. Oh, she uh, was gonna ask you if you had newspaperarchives.com and newspapers.com, which one of those do you have? newspapers.com i think not archives i don't think well we uh, should get that clear because Donna's going to buy the one that we do not have right yeah. right 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 if we are not funded <laughs> if if the like if the library sorry it isn't a matter of being funded if the library arrangements don't is, work out is too busy doing something else yes 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 um because i have been i i do think it would be good to be have access to the um, Hampshire Gazette, the Northampton Gazette, and then the Hampshire Gazette, and not only the Springfield newspaper. Just yeah. well, <laughs> right. We want to get the Greenfield papers, which are in the in archives.com, I believe. Is that right, Alan? I'm going to get this confused again, but I think it's archives.com that has the, the Greenfield papers. I, I don't know. I've been focusing on Worcester, so I don't really know. I mean, that's what this family research. So and that's where they're from. So I don't know. Oh, you mean you, you have bought it not for this project, but for your own purposes. Yeah, yeah. I can use it for anything, but they don't care. So. Well, just to, to uh, put this in your head, Allison has given me her access to genealogy, the whatever it's called. Genealogy. She's a day shift. She's a day shift and I'm the night shift. Because we, we realized that Allison never works until it's after midnight and I am never no, working I after never, midnight. So we have no danger of being on at the same time. Really? That works. <laughs> I think Alan and I might be more, yeah. more at risk. Similar, similar times. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so, so I, what else do we need to talk about before we improve? <laughs> the draft schedule that I developed that I spent 14 <laughs> seconds developing. <laughs> well, um, I'll just, I'll just review this with you. Um, at the uh, 250th meeting, they may ask me how my plans are going for that outdoor, outdoor installation at the library. The diorama. Which, is, that what yeah. it, is that what you're, yeah. yeah the, the panels, which you remember, um, I had originally done a thing that was going to work if, it was 2021, 
but we've missed that boat kind of obviously. Um, uh, and so I kind of put it on the back burner because the whole thing needs to be rethought kind of conceptually. And now since we started this research, um, which is really exciting, I, I realized that we'll probably come up with some things that would, would be options to include in that panel. So that's what I'm telling them is that I'm just kind of waiting for us to finish what we're doing here and then we'll take that information and roll that into an idea for that outdoor panel. And the outdoor <laughs> panel will reference our project too. You know, that's the other thing we want to do. We want people standing there to say, to see that there are more resources beyond this panel that they could go right, to. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, and we can do that in part by putting QR codes in various places. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, even, even I, the most unhip person, when it comes to this stuff, new to put a QR code on that little history of the town hall safe, you know, so people yeah. can stand or up and take it. Put yeah. on, you know, we can we can include the historical society too, and we you know we can do good with that sign. Right. So I thought, I mean, it's been a long time since I saw the um, maquette, I guess, and I only saw it online for your diorama. I thought the point was that it was that you were including content that you could, where you could see the reference location from the back of the library. <laughs> Basically, it's, it's to interpret that view out across the valley, which, you know, let's, let's be honest, Waitley certainly is included in the view, but so are many other towns and features. Right, right. But it's, it's, you know, that's all relevant to Waitley history too. Um, right. So, but we can discuss, should it only be Waitley? You know, should it be, I don't know. There's all kinds of ideas for things we could do. You know, I, at one point was thinking, you know, we're coming up on the anniversary of the American Revolution too. You know, we, we could do something with, I don't know, you know. I don't know. I, I, I think maybe it wants to be sort of a generalist thing and not a very specific topic, just kind of points of interest that you really can reference when you're standing there that you may not have known about. So that's kind of how I'm thinking about it now. So and maybe it spans thousands of years. I don't know. So things like the Native American name for Sugarloaf. Yeah, right. Exactly. Or there used it's to be just... a, a, used to be a house on top of Sugarloaf, a hotel, you know, and Toby and, and I don't know, things that aren't there anymore that we can talk about it. How long will it last? Well, my idea was that it'd be somewhat dynamic and not just be up there and installed for the next hundred years, that it, you know, it'd go up and then a couple of years we replace it with something else. And maybe we put the first one back up a couple of years. I don't know, it depends on, the panels themselves are not particularly expensive, right? To, you know, maybe, Two hundred dollars. I don't know, but you know they're and, not. And is the two hundred fiftieth paint is is the two hundred fiftieth buying the materials? Yes, and I'm you know and good. good. I, I got to get well. That's the idea, and I guess I was supposed to be thinking about what the, the the most complicated part of this whole thing is the hardware that holds the sign, and how where does that come from? Is it off the rack? You know, you can buy these things pre-made. Mm -hmm. You could have someone make one. It could be wood, it could be metal, you know, Keith, Keith needs a granite bench for some reason as part of this. So it, the whole thing needs some thinking. And I just haven't got, I've been so busy and, you know, it hasn't been any pressure really. The, the anniversary, you know, the 250 has been pretty fluid and is sliding it along. So I haven't felt like, oh my God, there's this big event coming up. We should have it done for this thing. And we're still not even sure we can gather together, you know, so. Next June. Who knows? Yeah. Right. Although it's outside and. I know, but you know, there was a time when that wasn't okay. You remember? Right, right, right. Yeah. Yes, I do. Line, so, yeah. yes, so, I do. So that's where it stands. And I guess I, I got to get on it some more. I was kind of waiting for this thing to drive the whole idea. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I don't think anybody's sitting around town going, oh my, I'm so sad. They haven't put that panel up yet. No, but I, I, I imagine. But we wanna, that, 
since we they're want to, we want to do it while the committee is still um active the right. 200 yeah. yeah right and 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 i imagine to have it up before that third week in june which i still haven't put in my calendar when they're doing all their other stuff yeah it'll be time soon to really do something about it with your third hand right and as i say the hardware <laughs> issue is the hardest the hardest part Right, because and the thing I know the least amount about. And you've talked, I'm sure you've talked to people at Historic Deerfield or Sturbridge, you know, who well, have I'm the one who's done those things. Well, yeah, there's all kinds of ways to do it, Donna. You know, it just yeah. depends, depends on your level of of um, uh, anticipated vandalism. Yeah, this one down you know, at the Park and Ride in Waitley, just on the corner, on uh, five and ten. There is. Yeah, they have a. Um, you mean at 116 and 5 and 10? Yeah. Yep. What about there's it? The big panel up there that describes a little bit of the what you can see from the back of the, the thing or the, the landscape. Um, what's been done oh, to it. So oh, that's a, interesting. There is something down there that explains what you're seeing as you're standing really? there waiting for your bus. Yeah. Yeah. DEM. Oh, somebody. Have to go through. Uh, right. well, it, it doesn't say much, but it does say something. Okay. So, well, as I said, that seems like a high vandalism area. You know, I don't yeah. know. It, that's why I mentioned it. That's, um, yeah. Just but the more bomb, the more bulletproof the thing is, of course, the more expensive the thing is. Yeah. So it's just, we have to make a decision what we want. Part of me says, you know, this could be wood and that might be nicer and could be built by someone like Mike Den Dennehy. You know, would that be a way to go? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bye. Um, okay, so what did you think of my draft calendar? Very good. Uh, or maybe I should say to start that it seemed to me that I at least will continue being thrilled by everything I find and saving things that have, you know, and, and, and thinking I'm going to spend an hour a day on this, but in fact, being lucky to get two hours a week, you know, yeah, that's um, and, and, and that I, I need to be forced to, to finish something. <laughs> well, don't forget, we just need to finish enough to get this thing off the ground. You know, you can, you can work right. on potato farmers yeah. all next year if you want to, you know, right. or whatever topic grabs yeah, your attention. Better than nothing at all. So, right. Some of the, so, the deadline looked a little bit odd, like, some are Tuesday, many are Tuesdays, but there's a Saturday and a Sunday there on the dates. Oh, no, these are months. These are oh, months. A month. Oh, no, 22, of course. Okay, yes, never. yes, I know, I know. They you do know, look odd, uh, don't they, Alan? <laughs> so I was just talking with a friend about the fact that the fact that we lost great chunks of two years means that the calendar seems very odd. No. <laughs> yes, these are very, I'm these really are disoriented. We, yeah. we could we could have a discussion of whether the targets are the first of the month or the fifteenth or the thirtieth, you know. Or the eleventh. I think it should be the eleventh. That's our number. Yes. Okay. Um, so, but I, I, it seemed to me that until we have confirm the layers and listed what we think we're going to post in each layer, we can't productively start the work of going to the historical society and really determining what source material they have that we can use, especially now. I know Allison's heard this, but I'm not sure, Alan, if you have, that I realize that although they have a pretty good catalog, many photographs and documents are cataloged but have not been digitized right and, Derica sent a bunch off to boston to well and exactly and derica has at least four major large boxes of photographs to be and sent no to. doubt those will be the things that you want no yeah. doubt so maybe i should ask Derica what her plans are. And that might mean that we need to decide the content we want earlier rather than later so that anything 
she's sending to Boston. I've forgotten who Boston is. It's, it's someone who's doing didn't this. It, for Boston, Donna, didn't it go already? No, no. It was about to go before the pandemic started. I know it did not go right. before. They are, they, are, they are now, they have been for months stacked on that dining right. table. And I went in to work on a project and I was told, oh, well, this stuff's all, it's about to leave for Boston. So well, I think, I think whenever that was, it was true, but it has not left. It's stacked in Derricka's oh, office. I was oh. hoping it was done and back. No, no. Maybe during a pandemic, someone could sit and digitize documents safely. Well, they weren't working in the office. We could do a whole sidebar on our odyssey dealing with the IRS, our unresolved <laughs> odyssey, and well, the fact that well, no one in the IRS goes to work anymore, <laughs> so no one's right. home. <laughs> so, you know, it, it would be pretty simple if, if that stuff is still here in town and, and we all decide we want to use something in the box in the magic boxes to simply just photograph it right there at the historical society and and get a an, you know capture a an image of it that's totally usable for use online um they have two good scanners right but there. you don't even need to do that you know a, a camera you is have a good camera scanner. Yeah. you know what i mean so so, so one of the uh okay so they are, the photographs are in individual folders, individual manila yeah. folders, but they are uh, in order of accession number. <laughs> they, they are not, which was they Derica. In, Derica is an archivist. They are organized in the least useful yeah, construct well, that we right, could right, come right. up with. Yes, right. Well, and I think Derica, <laughs> who, who I, you, you know, who was used to working on her own, someone else, it was not I, suggested that it would be helpful to have them organized by subject. And she just, she's had it, you know? <laughs> I mean, I mean, she's doing things like today, apparently a whole contingent of Sanderson's from Ohio is here and she's spending the entire day, you know, showing them everything <laughs> in town, including their family graves, which is very nice of her, right? Yeah. So, um, how to do this? Okay, why don't I start? Well, I, I would say I would say there's not so many there's not so many photographs that you couldn't go and just kind of flip your way through them. You absolutely could. You absolutely thing. could. But you know, although it would be helpful to have some ideas what you're looking for of, of what we're so maybe we need to identify. Let me ask Erica where she stands with the Boston project and explain what's going on. And then if she says, I'd really like to take them by date X and it's not Monday, then that could actually motivate us yeah, yeah. <laughs> to identify our first pass. Um, because even for the things that aren't being sent, and I don't remember why I ran into this, you, what the catalog entry says, it's in the blue book on this shelf, you know, and now the shelves have all changed. I, I'm really being sympathetic because I think she was just starting to get her arms around this when she was told she couldn't get move, yeah. back into, you know, she couldn't be there all the time. Um, and they need they need some um, assistance, you know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so that might change. That might change the deadlines for the names of the layers and the content of the layers. Is there, are there other things we're going to have to do that I couldn't think of yesterday when I was writing to you both? And, and I guess my question is, well, no, what we're going to do. how should, what about the finalizing the base map? Are we, are we asking Juliet now that we know she's built that everything is an hour of our precious, now we have seven hours left or seven and a half assuming we have funding, um, are we asking her to remove all of those things we don't I think want? That's not very complicated for her to do. And it might be very complicated for us. Okay. Once, once we have a usable base map, we can add things to it. I think right. that's too much difficult. We want a map with nothing on it, you know. With no distraction on it. No distractions, no commercial enterprises, no. Right. Okay. Does that give her enough time? Seven and a half hours is not. 
Uh, I don't know. <laughs> the yeah, I, don't know I mean, either. I think I think in in all sympathy for Juliet, the amount of work we're proposing for her is so silly in its scale. You know that. We um, what the time? <laughs> yeah, it's just no time at all. You know that. Uh, um, okay, so I should ask her about that. We want some consulting with her on the best way of showing things on the blank page. I think. Am I not coming through clearly, Allison? No, it's buzzing, sort of. Oh, okay. Um, We've got people working on our roof outside of my. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> noises and yeah, this, we're trying to solve leak problems. So oh just, dear. We don't Do know. You have a, is, is your roof slate? I can't remember. Uh, no, that's a. Um, it's asphalt. Asphalt roof, but I think the side walls are leaking because of oh. the, the old and the new house. And something is getting through and soaking up the walls between. So we've got basement problems too. So. That's how we developed our relationship with Scott Kiter. You know, Scott is now an empire. But now that when we met him, he was Scott with his hammer. Yeah. And, yeah. and that was only uh, 10 years ago. And we, somebody connected it. We had, leaks and um, plaster ceiling falling in problems. And he came in and fixed it, fixed it for free and said, when you, when you need me to do a real job, I will do it. And then he had three, three we, were, we were successively his biggest contract yet with the porch and the back edition. Oh, good. Um, oh, yes. Um, and, and by the way, this is a completely different topic, but I sent him the RFI for center school and he went because he is not and I based on my experience I trust him completely to be able to deal with anything I mean he's the one who discovered our house needed to be jacked up and you know uh -huh. fixed he's he's afraid of nothing. I wonder what kind of response they're getting to that RFI do you know I don't know I don't know they the walkthrough was the day we flew to Oregon and I had intended to just drive by and see how many trucks were there and I just got distracted and forgot so uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Know. yeah but anyway if you need somebody else <laughs> you know, water is horrible water leaks are horrible the uh the, you can't get any assistance unless the original roofer, if he's still in business, um, looks at it and will fix it himself. Nobody else will touch it. They just don't want to do, deal with it. We've called. And uh, so you need the original roofer to try and fix the leaks if they exist, uh, wherever they exist, and go from there. We're, we're hoping. Jeez. I don't know. And we got basement problems too, but that's a big tree and we need to remove roots and things that are encroaching on the dry stone foundation walls. <laughs> so it's, it's a mess. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. You like the color. <laughs> the color's great. The color's great. <laughs> um, so, okay. So, I'm going to ask Derek about the source material. I'm going to ask Juliet maybe after Monday when we should know if we have our funding or not, because I don't want to continue having her do things and <laughs> building up a deficit. Yeah. So, so we think the things we need her for most, most are to clean up the base map and to teach us how to post things. Is that what you said, Alan? I think so. I mean, making sure we're using, I mean, we seem to have pretty strong and reasonable ideas of what, what looks good on the web, but Juliet may have better ideas or different ideas and what's easy and hard to use. So just as a backstop sort of consultant. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to think of things that need not a whole lot of work on her part that um, right. that will right. assist us in actually making things useful and maintainable for the 
to the future. Right. Uh, the the fellow who the fellow who does the town website, uh, I I won't waste your time finding the emails, but he sort of suggested in one of his responses, you know, I could do this for you. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm inclined to use Juliet as much as we can because we've seen things that she's done and we know we like mm -hmm. them. And so that, and it seems to me that if we get to that point and he still feels that way, that um, we'd be the more, the more uh, we've resolved what we want it to look like, as you say, the better off we'll be. There's yeah. the layers part of our project, yeah. but there's also kind of going to be a home page and some other stuff that needs right. designing and some thoughtfulness. Right. And she will be very useful and I can help some, you know, with that. And probably I don't know how much the town, the town guy, you know, can help with that. But. Yeah, there's not very much on the town website that is uh, new material. I mean, I have to say when I was, for another reason, looking at some other small town websites, we actually have more, we're using our town website more than, and they all seem to use the same software. Yeah. It must be the yeah. small, low staff you know, website. Towns <laughs> are us, yeah. Yeah, ours, ours is used. Town.com. Yeah. Um, I, on the other hand, I, I, have have to have some meetings and since we're since the town won't let us meet in town spaces right now i mean for meetings for another organization we're doing them at the meekins library in williamsburg which is happily accepting outside meetings so i was on the meekins library website and it's really nice <laughs> I mean, it just really made me feel like someone who understands graphic unity and, and the so on and so forth has put this together so there it is. Um, okay. So do we want to talk about the layers now, or do you want to put that all, do you want us each to think about it and, and just agree that we will decide that the next time we meet? Would it be useful to each of us make a list of the layers that we're interested in and, then, and maybe prioritize, you know, the yes. top? couple of them as ones we're, we're going to get done first so that we that's have a good I, that's we a have good a idea. of things alan's got three things you've got two i've got three you know whatever it is that makes that makes the launch deck i think that's a good idea how many what do you think the number is we should be aiming for to be interesting to people to, as a start well if we each do our two or three that gives us you know, seven, eight, yeah. nine layers. That's a bunch of layers. Well, that would be plenty, I think. You mean if we happen to pick different ones? <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, we should make sure we pick. Well, or we consolidate. You know, if, you, if you've if you got potato farmers and I've got potato farmers, we'll put them together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it seems to me we ought to have five or we yeah. have a minimum of five. That's off the top of my head. Right, that well, that would feel two like, will be okay. Yeah, it would feel like a going concern. There's still this question of what we what we call these layers and what those what those boxes are that we're putting our stuff in, but maybe that's you know something we can tackle better now that we've been doing our deep sea diving, you know, for okay. ideas. Maybe we can do that better. Okay, so uh, let's just to be. Uh, I mean, are you doing an Eastern European bias layer now? No, no, because it has no, it has no, ge even though. No geographic I, reference. It has no, ge because you were right. The last time we met, you said we have to limit it to things where we can put a pin. Put in. a pin on a map. Yeah. And as far as I can tell, it's the whole damn valley. Right, right, right. You have <laughs> so to be able, it's a big to be able black to throw a rock. You have to be able to throw a rock and hit something. Yes, yes. Yeah. So let's, let's do that for the ne next meeting, but let's each, um, identify both layers and some content. Uh, what are we calling the specific, are we calling them entries? Sure. We call, okay. Ooh, so list, or sites. Okay, so layers and sites. Okay, that'll be fun. Um, all right, that's good. Uh, am I worried about, I don't think I'm worried about anything else about this. Um, no, yeah, Do you want um, background on these? On these pardon things. me. We need some background on these things. Maybe that's what the photographs are and the 
a little bit of historical documentation, something to go to a web page. When you have a site, you need to say something about it. So I guess that's. I, I guess I think we are sites by definition should have at least one photograph historic document that can be visualized or or quote that we can pull out of a newspaper and we'll have to pick a font and how to present them right yeah, yeah. um, um I mean, yes or you know it could just i mean the pin itself is indicating where the the site is so the corner of 116 and route 10 for example you know yeah. you may not be able to find a photograph that shows whatever it is you want to talk about there now that it looks like a you know highway intersection um you mean it could be a contemporary photograph it, it could be or there, maybe there is maybe it's just descriptive language is that this is this is where george washington slept you know april 11th 1775 yeah we have no photograph right well, like when it seems like months ago, because it probably was like when I wanted to illustrate the corduroy road for Mother George Road, I pulled a snap out of the Library of Congress because it's open access. We're allowed to use it. It was an interesting photograph. I, I guess I'm saying uh, uh, illustrations are preferred, but I don't think they all have to have that right. illustration to make the whole thing work. Okay. You know, if, if we're doing the distilleries, for example, and we're, we're showing where the gin distillery was, we, we don't, you know, are we going to find a stock photo of a gin bottle just to have a photo? No. We could use one of the bottles from the Historical Society exhibit. Although I think our own gin. We can buy our own gin and empty our own bottle. Right, we could, you know. we could use, buy <laughs> Stolichnaya, which would be. There you go. But see, I see. I, that would be anachronistic. <laughs> right. So I think, you know, there may be things that you are not going to have, well, you know. And, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Where's look, that from? Our backyard. There's a bottle dump out there. Is there a soda? Is it a soda bottle? Yeah, it's a soda bottle. There was a. Does it say where it's from? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I can. Northampton. No, it's Waitley. It's um... Alan. Alan. <laughs> Alan, you have to come look at the exhibit in the museum. Oh yeah, you do really. <laughs> it probably needs cleaning, but there there is a name. I like the way he just reached behind his desk and found it. <laughs> oh well, now you need to find a, a, an early. 19th century gin bottle out there. So go get digging. But that's unlikely because the distillery was down by Marianne Simon's house. I right, mean. but the people took the gin and drank it someplace. You know, they True. probably put it in their stoneware crock is what they did and brought it home. Two people last Sunday asked me what would the jugs have hold, held? And I said probably cider and realized I was making that up. You know, I have no. I have, you kill, it's like the picture that's in your, you know, your china cabinet. What was that supposed to hold? Well, something liquid. Right, right, right. All kinds of things. So it's. But there are descriptions of, of people going to the, you know, to the rummery with their jugs to be filled. So mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're going and and bringing their own containers and tanking up. Well, I was I was thinking. Uh, yesterday about the 22 potters and the multiple decades of work and the fact that we now know there are collectors all over the New England who are buying Waitley pots and mm -hmm. you know five or six people nearby who have 70 80 Waitley objects themselves and the woman who bought the, the woman who bought the ore cut and weight pot in the silent auction that the church had on Sunday lives in Ohio and collects Waitley really? pots. Yes. Okay. Yes. Why does she collect? That's so interesting. Why? She has some history. She has some family history in Waitley. It's part okay. of her. It would be like, you know, my father grew up in Austin and me caring about Rip Van Winkle because or prison bars. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. So your prison yeah, when, collection. Okay. When we when we um toboggan down the hill up from my grandmother's house, we had to be careful to stop so as not to run into the prison fence. Oh. 
That's cool. <laughs> All right. Yes. And you'd hear the sirens go off. That meant something, an, an escape or an attempt. So, Alan, I'm really interested in what that bottle is because don't forget we're doing, you know, drinks in Waitley and we may put yes. a soda company, I, you know. There, I, there was a, a soda company in Waitley. A, a yes. Bottle. A, a bottling company. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and the, and, and the, um, the historical society has, it's actually just sitting behind the door of the museum right now, this neat, maybe two and a half feet tall machine that you use to put the caps on. We'll put the caps yeah. on. Bottle capping machine, which is cool. So, yes, Alan, your job is to do have many of those. Well, I, need to, that, Alan. I need to look more carefully at this. I think I have it written down somewhere, but I, I'm not going to find it right now. That is really cool that it was just sitting behind your desk. What else you got back there? Up in the corner over there. <laughs> <laughs> All the, we, we see a lot of paper. We can see a lot of paper. And well, coats. you know, one thing we learned from this snowmore exhibit is that people have stuff in their houses around town. And it, oh, it yeah. would be fun once a year to have a call kind of for entries to see who right. can bring in Waitley soda bottles and who can bring in, you know, whatever the thing is and see what shows up. I think that's super interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it would be cool. So, um, well, or like... Um, uh, maybe you both heard the story when Neil first did a little talk for the historical society long enough ago that it was in the center school. He had, you know, probably had 2000 shards and not 20,000 or 10,000 or whatever he is now. He takes all these shards. He's talking about what he's found. And Hazel Dennehy, who lives across the street, says, oh, we just threw them all out except the intact platter that we use for Thanksgiving every year. And when Dan came in, because he wanted to see his pots installed and I was showing him around, he said, oh yeah, that's the platter we use for Thanksgiving. <laughs> no. I mean, it's transferware. It's not Waitley stoneware, obviously, because they didn't no. make it. So interesting. So it is, it's pretty funny. Um, okay, so we have homework. I have a little homework. Uh, I'm inclined, if you are both up to it, to sort of just keep setting meetings so we move this along. Yeah, no, that's great. I enjoy them. Um, and I'm away a lot over October. So do you want to meet in, do you want to meet next week? Do you want to meet in two weeks? Do you want to meet in three weeks? I don't think we need next week, do we? No, no I, was, I was kind of being rhetorical. Oh. <laughs> Um, I could meet on the 19th. Uh, what is this? I could meet, since this time of day is good, I could meet on the 19th, the 26th, or the 27th. Otherwise, I'm mostly away. Yeah, we've got a meeting scheduled for the Historical Commission on the 18th. Right, which I think we will have because we didn't meet in October. Yeah. Um, uh, there is a site plan we need to look at, and there may be some other things. It probably won't be a long meeting. Um, I may not be able to make that one, but uh, th that last week in October is all open for me, so I can do whatever you think is good. 26th or 27th, do those work for you, Alan? Uh, either one earlier, yeah. I've got a doctor's appointment late in the day in the 26th, but otherwise it's fine. 11 o'clock is fine either day. Uh, okay, I don't care. Do either of you care Tuesday or Wednesday? No. no. All right, well then let's do it on the 26th. I mean, we won't be on for longer than an hour. No. Okay, that's okay. great. Um, that is still October, okay. Great. All right, super, super. Really exciting about the bottle, Alan. Sorry about your roof. You can use it to catch, collect water. It's, um, not to, yeah, yeah, I have two of them here. And sooner or later, oh, I'll get to it. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. What else have you got, Alan? <laughs> uh, this is about it. Well, actually, we found old Any Any stoneware water. shards back there? No. Wait, wait, you found an old what? Glass. With this, uh, we had a, a retaining wall <laughs> rebuilt out in the backyard here. Up to the goes up to the old barn or up to the back of the house. And we started digging it out to for some reason. Oh, we're rebuilding the wall and turned up old um, old parts from an old automobile. Uh, even Bruce Walker couldn't identify them. They were 
pretty well rusted out, but steering wheel bits and a, a spring and a few other odds and ends just came out of the fill. Um, it was, wow. It was a mess. We, we threw them away, but they really were not valuable. Some years ago, we tromped through the underbrush, which has gotten even thicker as we walked through the Brooks and Labello properties below ours and got to the very edge of the Mill River and walked all the way along the edge, you know, over to Christian Lane. <laughs> I think it's the Labello property. There's an entire car down there. Oh yeah. I would put it as a fifties or early sixties car from when I last saw it. It's gotten so thick. I, I, I'm not sure you could get in there yeah. without, I, I mean, it's, it's not my brush, so I wouldn't whack it. Up to the Quabbin and there are some old abandoned cars out there, twenties and thirties vehicles that. Uh, oh no yeah. I don't, I don't think this is so That's old because yeah. I, I mean, I just love the idea that someone didn't feel like, dealing with the expense of getting rid of a car and just pushed yep. it into the river. <laughs> yep. So great for the beavers. Pretty well worn out. Yeah. Funny. Funny. Okay. All right. Well, this is good. Thank okay. you. <laughs> All right. We'll be in touch. Ellen, right, okay. let us know about that, about which services you have. So Donna can get on to the okay, missing yeah, one. Genealogy bank and newspapers.com. I don't think I have the archive one. But are you willing to let you us be use, sure? Yeah. Are you willing to let us use your newspapers.com if the town doesn't set up its own? Yeah, sure. Yep, oh, yeah. great. Okay. Well, sometime figure out some way to tell us how to do that. Yeah, I think it's limited because of the genealogy uh, ancestry access because it goes through them. So that there may be problems, <sighs> issue sharing it, but uh, it should be. All okay. right. That's All right. Up. Okay, and I will let you know what Cindy says. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, okay, all right, bye-bye.